Sony has joined the world of virtual reality with PlayStation VR. The headset represents the cheapest of the big three on the market, and is the only option for console gamers interested in the technology as things stand. However, players will also need to invest in a PlayStation camera priced at £44.99, and, to enjoy the full experience, a couple of PlayStation Move controllers, with a twin pack costing £69, although you could probably find them for less. This brings the total cost to £464, which is still cheaper than the Rift headset, with Oculus also charging £189 for its own controllers. In the box is the PlayStation VR headset, a processor unit, an HDMI cable, instruction manuals, a set of in-ear headphones, a lens cleaning cloth, a demo disc and all the power cables you need. So many cables. For the longest time I believed it was witchcraft that made the PlayStation VR work. Having taken a boxed one home and set it up, I've discovered the truth, it's all about cables. Lots and lots and lots of cables. And then some more cables. The setup process, to be fair, sounds trickier than it actually is. The whole process took around 30 minutes feeding a series of HDMI cables from the PS4 to the PSVR processing unit, then to the headset itself. The processing unit was a mystery for a long time before Sony revealed what it actually does, and it's all pretty important stuff. While the processing unit adds no power to the console itself, nor can developers actually program anything into it, it handles a few key functions. Firstly it helps carry out object-based 3D audio processing, which basically means you can pinpoint exactly where noises come from in games, so far, in my experience, it's made sound design in games brilliant and terrifying. It also displays the social screen, basically rendering the image you see in VR onto the TV, though at a lower resolution and frame rate. It also displays the standard PS4 screen in cinematic mode allowing you to play non-VR games or watch movies on a display the size of a movie theater screen. The one annoying thing about this processing unit is that it requires a dedicated power supply, which is fine in itself, but when you turn the PS4 completely off, the unit remains in a semi-powered state, with the red off bar permanently lit. This means the thing is constantly using electricity, so even when the whole setup is powered down you'll have to unplug it if you wish to save the pennies or simply get rid of the annoying light before bed. But, once everything is plugged in, the headset simply works. No drivers to update, no system requirements to fiddle with, no graphics options to tweak, you're simply ready to go. Yes, there's a...